Maenad, female follower of the Greek god of wine, Dionysus. The word Maenad comes from the Greek Maenades, meaning mad or demented. During the orgiastic rites of Dionysus, Maenads roam the mountains and forests, performing frenzied, ecstatic dances. Hello everyone, I have something new to show you today. I have a new painting. Now, the piece I'm about to show you this is a new oil painting done on linen mounted on panel, and I've just framed it. It is a portrait of a Maynard in a spring outing tire. Now you may be wondering what a Maynard is. A Maynard, according to the dictionary, a Maynard, a female follower of the Greek god of wine, Dionysus. The word Maynad comes from the Greek Maynades, meaning mad or demented. Dur during the orgiastic rites of Dionysus, Maynads roamed the mountains and forests, performing frenzied ecstatic dances and were believed to be possessed by the god. So I didn't set out to do a portrait of a Maynad, but I have had this inspiration to make figures in woodlands and I'm really interested in the costumes and a lot of the compositions of Greek inspired paintings and so it just was a good title somewhere halfway through the painting to um, come up with. Now parts of this painting are more finished and rendered in what we would call a classical academic style and other areas are done more in a design flat graphic style and I really love the combination of these two. This painting was started off as an Alda Prima painting or in other words a one-shot painting done all at once. Done at the first. Uh, I however am not the best at finishing a painting in one sitting. I always have this niggly feeling that I have to come back to it and do some more work. So that is what I did with this one here. This painting actually was started almost a year ago, then it was put on the back burner. I had other projects going on and I didn't want to rush its finish. But about a week ago I came and uh, put a coat of varnish on it and now it is called done. So. Here you are, and, and this is the unveiling. There are a lot of beautiful passages in this piece. There are a lot of transparent areas where the canvas is showing through, and you can see some of the underpainting. So in my work, I favor a fairly smooth surface with a gloss varnish so that you can really see all the colors and the blendings come back to life. All those deep saturated colors and all those details that I worked on are preserved forever. Some people don't like gloss varnishes, but I don't really see any other way around them. You know, the matte varnishes tend to uh, rob your paintings of a couple stops of light, as it were, and they can chalk up your darks. And so for any kind of full value painting like this with a figure or any kind of round forms where there's this illusion of three dimensions being created, I really strongly suggest against the matte varnish. In fact, I once applied one to a painting 
experimentally as it were and I had a client who wanted to buy it and he actually refused that to um, take it home until I changed the varnish and so I had to change the varnish I had to take the mat off and put the gloss on so ever since then I have uh, not really experimented with any kinds of uh, matte varnishes I'm very happy with the gloss I just thought it was something I would mention because I see a lot of people trying to push the matte varnish these days and I was also feeling the pressure and that's why I did it against my better judgment and um, my collector did not like it. All right, just want to dry your eye to this corner over here. You see a lovely medley of different colors, almost primary colors. There's red, cerulean blues, true orange, kind of a true chrome yellow, chromium oxide green, and orange molybdate. There's just all these beautiful little color harmonies going on up here. And so it balances off the picture. And instead of going for a vista or a horizon, I've just flattened the picture plane out a little bit and brought it into the decorative. So this painting, as all my paintings, they are meant to go in homes and in indoors. And so I like to do this because they're able to live in this space in both a pictorially pleasing way, but also in more of a narrative and three-dimensional way. They can either draw you out of the space you're in into a more of a contemplative frame of mind or they can just act as a pure decorative support to your lifestyle and just delight the eyes of people who you have in your space. There are a lot of beautiful passages in this piece. There are transparent areas where you can see down to the imprimatura or what we would call the first layer of the portrait. There are more built up passages with thick lead white added in impasto. There are glazes with transparent pigments, both high and low tinting. And then there's one of my favorite things to do, which is just to lay pure blue in, usually cobalt blues, just to give a bit of opacity and richness and invoke some of that old master Titian and, and Tintoretto sensibility. Actually, that was one of the inspirations for this piece. I've done a series of portraits of this woman. Her name is Nicola, and she used to work at a gallery I exhibited at. But she uh, kindly came over to pose for me, and um, I put her in this golden dress. And it has become a dress that reminds me of that warmth of Venetian Renaissance painting. And, and, and Baroque painting. It's, it's just um, a beautiful golden dress and it reflects so well into her skin. You can see here on the neck and on the cheeks. There's really just a great inner light coming from this portrait. And that's why I decided to frame it with a gold frame as well, to go with the dress and the inner light. And if I do say so myself, I actually think I painted the shirt her, her dress better than the gold looks. I, I feel more gold and more light emanating out of her painted garment than I do out of the frame. So I'm proud of that effect. I'm still proud of the gold all the same because you see it does offer a sheen in different lights so that one of my favorite things is when you have a dark room and you know, you just have just enough light to see by, but you wouldn't really think enough light to view a painting on your wall by. Uh, the gold has a way of catching what little light there is and really interacting with the room in a special way. So for this reason, I like to go for gold frames quite often. Even if I have a painting where there's just a little bit of gold in the picture, I still consider that to be a essential piece of the framing process. All right, so here we have a image of the painting upside down. And you can see it actually doesn't look that bad upside down, but I just like to show this because sometimes people think you can hang a painting any way if the portrait is of someone who is lying on the ground or floating or, you know, in some kind of unusual perspective, not in a, you know, as seen from eye level, 
side size traditional seated portrait kind of view which is what we're so used to seeing you know the passport photo look which is what i i joking like jokingly like to call it with my students um you know once we were deviating from that kind of passport passport straight on portrait you know if you just get a painting and you take it out of its its box you're not always sure which direction to hang it in and i just wanted to show this because while it does look light like uh, you could hang it upside down you know it's it's still gonna have a bit of oddness to it um, so don't do this another wrong way but just fun to see but it should be like this. So it's a quite detailed picture. So let's close in for some details. <laughs> 